Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming. Today, we'd like to report to you, share with you our cult cultural day. Uh, uh, last week, we went to the Getty Villa uh, in Malibu. Uh, so we have some pictures, some photos for you to look at. And uh, what happened to everyone? Everyone should, uh, those who went, should feel free to make comments. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's get the show started. Does this man have a sister or not? That's what this thing says. All right. So this is in the elevator. And you can tell we're practicing social awareness. We're wearing masks. Huh? Okay. And um, uh, um, and uh, that we we doing a gypsy dance here right at the entrance. Okay. Mm. You recognize these people? Okay. Um, to museum, uh, we got in to museum, and you can you see here uh, the photo of Sien Tung here. Uh, uh, it was fascinating to her because um, she, um, she saw the man here which looks like uh, a bread, stick of bread. She's the, our temple bread maker, so she's fascinated by this, uh, actually is Heracles, okay? Hercules, Heracles. Uh, and this is his, uh, his uh, club. Uh, the story is that Heracles' uh, favorite weapon is a club. And his uh, first feet. Uh, uh, so this he he this is what he used. So, but for some reason it reminds Sien Tung of a, a stick of bread. Okay, so she thought she would commemorate that. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, see the ocean right here. Lots of trees. It's very breezy. That day was loud around. Uh, the 90s in uh, uh, Rosemead, but uh, uh, in Malibu is around, I'd say, 70s, huh? Very breezy, ocean breeze. It's a very pleasant day. Mm. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous museum. Mm. Uh, posing, trying to take some photos here for the Chan Han book uh, cover, Chan Han book number two cover. Uh, this is, we're not going to use this. Uh, but, uh, but, um, uh, but I didn't realize people were bowing behind me. So I raised laughing. <laughs> These fanatics. Uh, and this is the main building. Uh, where the exhibits are. Uh, um, <laughs> mm, video. Oh. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, we went uh, in the morning. We did a morning, uh, a morning uh, appointment at ten o'clock. So, um, uh, so more or less, the whole temple went. No one's here at all, right? Uh, anyway, uh, next. And uh, the entrance here. Um, Uh, 
Any one to, anyone wants to make any kind of comments? Feel free, huh? And I'm amazed here at how unhappy these people are. And the bus, all these bus here, they look so unhappy. If I had my bus mate, I, I would look so happy, you know. It isn't, it's not that often you have your bus mate, but no, these people look so serious, so unhappy. So apparently the famous people are not very happy. This is Statue of Venus. I was fascinated by the, the what do you call this, uh, huh, folks? Uh, I think um, uh, not uh, casa, uh, something, not cabin, not, what is that called? Not cabana? No, not cabana. Uh, anyway, uh, it's very nice. Uh, and um, so there's a statue of Venus here. Uh -huh. Lotuses. Hmm? There's some white lotuses. Where is this? In the garden area? The jardin? Hmm? Dining area. Below the, the eating area, okay. Yeah. And um, uh, we were f I was fascinated by this uh, mosaic here. Uh, this depicts a lion uh, eating, uh, looks like a horse, okay, attacking a horse. And I was fascinated by uh, this is red things here are blood. So I was drawn to the uh, violence. But the thing is, the music, it looks very, very real. I, I loved it, you know, like the lion, you know, putting his claws into the, into the body of this, uh, this horse. Yeah. It looks helplessly. Hmm. And this is Jardin. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Hmm. Uh, I would call this a crowning achievement if our temple looks anything like this. Then my career would have been worth it. And uh, this is one Tixunim here, uh, meditating, becoming enlightened. Hmm. Look at that. We should have this too in our temple, huh? Grow these things here so that this uh, trellis here uh, with, uh, with a lot of uh, growth. Uh, these are grapes, by the way. Uh, I don't know what the sisters are doing. <laughs> uh, why would you have the back, your back taken? You have a photo of your back. That, uh, I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, this is life imitating arts. We were fascinated by this statue here in the, in the Jardin. Uh, and so Ray uh, wanted to experience and get that experience, experience that feeling, I think. Okay. And you see the similarity here. Okay. And I was showing him, no Ray, you do got it wrong. It has you have to stretch a little bit more and twist the body a little bit. See? Yeah. yeah. And besides his wrong arm. You see? <laughs> no it isn't. No it isn't. Uh, and uh, you recognize her, don't you? Uh, huh? um, I thought, honestly, because she's a real cultivator, I thought she would be here at the Way Mountain Temple doing a great compassion and repentance for us on our behalf. But no, she went with us as well. So that's why the temple is empty. And this mama and favorite daughter, huh? is mama here? Uh, uh, Okay, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, Dr. Kuo, hmm? 
And boy, Jimmy looks happy, doesn't he? And Ray, look at that. Ray looks like a kid, smiling and showing teeth and everything. Okay, and I was wondering, hmm, what shall I talk about? What kind of Dharma talk can I give this Sunday? <laughs> what would people think if we show you our cultural day? So, and then Sang Wook, very calm throughout the whole time, never excited at all. Uh, uh, cool and collected the whole time, said, Master, calm down, calm down. Yeah. Okay, this is lunchtime for us. Uh, they have uh, uh, next to the building, there's a lunch area here. It's kind of secluded. It's a very nice day because there weren't a lot of people. Mm. And so we took over uh, two, two tables and uh, uh, Master Xinjie's parents joined us. Okay. Uh, and uh, we had, uh, guess what? What did we have for lunch? Take a guess. Bread, what else? <laughs> okay. And uh, they're making sandwiches, Vietnamese sandwich. Uh, this woman here has some special talent. Okay? Look at all these people. They all enjoy it. You know, Ruth, you remember Ruth? You know Ruth, right? Uh, every time she comes here, she eats like a, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a mice, a mouse, you know, like a Mimi, yeah, Mimi mouse. Mm. But that day she picked out like crazy. She, can you imagine, she finished this, <laughs> <laughs> she finished the entire sandwich by herself, okay? And she, she ate uh, uh, snacks and cookies and, you know, pineapple pineapple cakes and fruits and, and bananas. I mean, this woman picked out. Really? Yeah. I was shocked. And Xian Jie said, I don't know her at all, you know? <laughs> and what's this? There's some sort of, uh, thank you. There's some sort of a video here. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> do you see that? <laughs> you see that? Nice idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anyone? Pineapple. <laughs> Somebody is throwing food around like a kid. Okay, so I was saying, uh, is there more of this? No. <laughs> uh, it's more of this? Oh, we're having too much fun. That's not right. Not true cultivators at all. Okay, even Xian Tong is is just having a, a good time, such a good time. Mm. And Joseph, you know Joseph, right? Look, he's smiling, very happy boy. Huh? Look at this, and the mommy, he's cracking a joke, and and uh, mommy uh, laughed. Huh? Uh, even Xin Xin said, wow, these people are strange. Hmm. And then, oh, let me, let me tell you. Uh, so what happened? Uh, what happened? This is oh. what's going on. See, see that thing flying around? So we were passing food around. So we were passing food around. And this woman here, so we were throwing things around. I was passing things around, I mean. Uh, not throwing things around, so because it's so far away, so I always start throwing uh, 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 apples around as well, and uh, only this woman could catch it. No one else could catch any of the fruits. So this woman here is a very good catcher. I was impressed. So this is the food here. So. Uh, 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 this uh, Vietnamese uh, thing here, appetizer, and uh, that's the, what we had for lunch. Okay? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then after we finish lunch, uh, just like Japanese style, we thank the gods and we hug the tree. So.
who is more sincere, you think? Hmm? He's posing like a celebrity. He, has, he doesn't put his heart into it. Are you ready? There's a lot of end on it. Did you hear that? Xian Tong saying there are lots of ants in the trees. Okay, next. No, no, there's no need to overdo it. And Xian Hui, you recognize her? Can you imagine she's laughing? Seriously? I never saw this before. I mean, at lunch, I mean, we're all laughing except for Xian Hui, typically. And you say, what do you guys find so funny? I mean, you're not even funny. And look at our Vietnamese movie star. Look at this. Huh? And we post for posterity. Hmm? Everyone was laughing except for Xian Wei. What did I tell you? <laughs> Even Zhang Wu was smiling. But Xian Wei, I don't like it here. <laughs> I'd rather be back at Wei Mountain Temple working. It's a waste of time. I want to be enlightened. <laughs> ah, Korean number one wife. Sound like a lot of sparrows, you know. <laughs> Look at oh wow, what a nice photo. I like this photo. And also I was surprised that Mama was with us as well, you know. Okay, uh, lots of photos. Uh, I was telling him that that's how I started when I first started learning Chan. This is how I got started my first day doing Chan. And I would say, Um. You see that? Um. And then uh, a year later, I graduated the Half Lotus. See? And that's Heinz right here. Huh? Look at that. He has a walker. Uh, just like uh, a young lady here. Hmm? Hmm. And uh, hmm. having too much fun. This is embarrassing. Oh, speaking of embarrassment, <laughs> Malcolm, you should have waited a little bit longer. <laughs> He's very judgmental, you know. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and after after the Getty Villa, uh, we had to bring uh, the Korean uh, number one wife and Jay to introduce them to Shake Shack. You know Shake Shack? This is a uh, number one fast food chain in Korea. So we wanted you know, number one wife to feel at home. So he brought her, for her to compare the Shake Shack here versus the Shake Shack in Korea. Mm. And she'll tell you what it is. But anyway, so I figure we should, uh, uh, as part of the culture, American culture, we uh, Los Angeles culture, uh, so uh, we thought we'll bring the whole, uh, everyone went <laughs> over to Shake Shack, even after lunch, <laughs> they went over there. And... Uh, 
uh, uh, I don't know what this video is about. Let's give it, uh, check it out. Mm. The shake is very, very good, by the way. Was that me, really? Okay, moment of weakness. Okay. Uh, it's not share. Can we move on from here? <laughs> okay, and then uh, and then uh, we uh, we uh, uh, look at Ray. He's licking the table. Mm. 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 And uh, Francis here, yeah. Uh, Love and kisses to everyone. Yeah. Mm. And peace, hot dogs and soda. This is at Shake Shack. Uh, this is in Santa Monica, uh, Westfield Shopping Center. Yeah. And that's the end. Ah. That's it? Okay, questions, comments. Why that? I was uh, warned that there will be a thousand photos. But uh, apparently they cut down a lot of stuff. I only showed you about a uh, hundred. Okay. Yes, number five. Hello, Master. I am a Christian and my friend introduced me to Buddhism recently. May I ask for your advice? I was angry at my daughter. After I found out she had bad grades in school and hung out with bad friends, I couldn't control my anger, so I yelled at her and said some words that hurt her. Now my daughter doesn't want to talk to me anymore. My job requires me to travel a lot. Therefore, I don't spend enough time with her. I am a divorced father, and I feel guilty that I cannot give my daughter a complete family. My daughter is an only child, and she doesn't have any siblings or relatives to hang out with. I know she is lonely and insecure. I want to make her happy. My biggest wish is to give my daughter a good life. Would you please teach me what can I do to make my daughter forgive me and how to make her happy while I'm away from her? Thank you for your kindness and compassion. Where is this person uh, f from? Korea, Vietnam, Afghanistan. Uh, Venerable Sharon, would you like to answer that? Uh, Master, this person is from the U.S. What kind of ethnicity? Um, white. No, you don't say why. It's so racist. I'm sorry, Caucasian. No, Caucasian, <laughs> my dear. Mm, Caucasian, okay? Yeah. Uh, what is he doing writing to me? He should go see a shrink. I mean, if you have relationship issues, go see a shrink. Go see a therapist, right? And that's what they do. We are Buddhist monks. We don't uh, uh, do counseling. Uh, I don't know whatever gave him the idea that we can help with relationships, okay? Uh, but um, but it typically, uh, typically, uh, um, we don't know him enough to be to, to for me to, to even consider giving a piece of advice. Uh, uh, so I, I, can't, I can't really help with, I don't know, uh, I need more information, okay? Uh, it's best that he goes and sees uh, a therapist and uh, work out the problems between him and his uh, daughter and uh, start from there. And then, uh, and then learn meditation. Meditation in general will help with, uh, with the anger issue. Uh, if you meditate, naturally your anger will subside 
will, will lessen. Uh, and the more skilled you are in meditation, the, the uh, faster uh, your anger will disappear. Okay, so you keep improving in meditation skills. And that's the nature of meditation. Because the way we, we practice meditation is to increase, uh, to help you increase your concentration power. And when that happens, uh, then it uh, cannot coexist with anger. Okay, uh, meditation resolves a lot of, uh, uh, reduces the fire, uh, the anger fire inside of you. And so that's the general answer. Okay. Um, and a good thing you you uh, uh, you it's uh, 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 I don't even know what uh, how old the daughter is and and so forth uh, and uh, 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 so uh, it's best to, to go see a therapist okay uh, or see a father or something. The Christians, Catholics are trained to do in psychologies and counseling. We're not. Okay, uh, we are really are not uh, that skilled at, uh, at counseling. Uh, if you have some real, real heavy duty problems, then come and see us. <laughs> That's what seems to be the case. Most people come to see us because uh, doctors can't help, therapists can't help, and so forth. Okay, but it's good. Good thing in general for this uh, gentleman to be worried about the welfare of his daughter. Uh, so it's a good, you know, good investment of uh, into her future, you know, the, the future relationship. Okay, uh, meditation is a Buddhist approach to to uh, quell to quelling uh, the anger issues, the fire uh, of anger. All right. Anyone else? I'm sure someone else uh, would like to ask uh, questions. Is that it? Okay, yes, number eight. Thầy cho xin cho con xin hỏi. Con bấm YouTube có nhiều thầy, có nhiều sư đó, họ xưng là sư, họ không xưng là thầy. Họ nói, sư, mấy sư nói không có tịnh độ, không có Phật Di Đà, không có Phật Quan Âm. Cái đó phải bài bác tịnh độ, phải không sư? Thầy. Um, Master, I have a question that uh, I saw a lot of uh, video on YouTube that there's a lot of monk. They say that there's no Pure Land, there's no Amitabha Buddha, there's no Kuan Yin. So does it consider a slandering Pure Land Dharma? Um, Slander, slandering is a rather in, uh, inappropriate word to use. Uh, uh, however, first of all, however the monks uh, call themselves, whether they call me, they call themselves as a monk, or call themselves a reverend, call themselves as a Dharma master, call themselves as a, a Chan master, call themselves whatever, is their personal choice. It's uh, nothing wrong with that, okay? They have their reasons. and. Uh, we can simply address them accordingly because that's how they like to be addressed. So it's not a problem, not an issue at all. Uh, 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 to me, uh, people have called me a monk, they call me hey, they call me Ray, they call me anything, it doesn't bother me at all. Okay, what's in a name? So, uh, so it really doesn't matter at all uh, how or how they want to be called, or how you call us, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter at all. Uh, to me, uh, it's up to you. You can call us anything you want, okay? Uh, we, it doesn't change who we are. It doesn't affect what we do at all. Uh, now, as far as these people are saying that uh, there are no Pure Land, there's no, no Wan Yin, there's no Amitabha Buddha, and so forth, uh, uh, you cannot call it slandering the Dharma at all. Uh, slandering the Dharma uh, has the assumption that you are trying to, um, to harm. You're trying 
you have malicious intent, if you will. I don't know how to translate malicious intent into Chinese or Vietnamese or Korean. Okay, malice, malice. Okay, your mind has malice. You have you have the intention to inflict harm. It's good. What kind of harm? Harm to the Dharma. Okay, and you try and destroy uh, this uh, the pure land Dharma. So, uh, so for someone to say that there's no pure land Dharma, there's no one Yin Bodhisattva, it's a uh, uh, not necessarily uh, slandering the Dharma at all, okay? Uh, if, uh, if they have no malice in their heart, okay? Uh, it could be that these people or these monks or these nuns are from Hinayana teachings, okay? In Hinayana, they don't have uh, the Pure Land Dharma, they don't have the uh, bodhisattva's concept, they don't have nece- so therefore, certainly, there, there's no one yin concept in Hinayana, okay? So therefore, based on the Hinayana teachings, they, they can simply say, of course, uh, they, there is no pure land. Of course, there's no one yin bodhisattva at all, uh, because that's not in our scriptures. In our Pali canon, there's no such a thing. So it's not a Buddhist teaching. So it's, that if they say that, then it's not a slander at all. Okay? Uh, uh, it, it's, uh, you, could, you, could, uh, you cannot call it slander, but you can call it ignorance. They don't know. That's all. Okay? Uh, if you, if you uh, the, the rest of you, if you, when you speak Dharma, Okay, uh, this is when you have to be uh, smart and you have to be open-minded. This is why we went to that uh, Getty Villa. Uh, part of the reason I had in mind was to uh, to uh, 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 to uh, share the the Western culture to with our sangha, with our temple. Uh, we. Uh, we want uh, to open the uh, Asian mind to the Western culture, okay? And so, uh, so it is. Uh, it was uh, uh, so that the mind, the mind for these people who cultivate uh, vigorously, are not closed, okay? They're not there yet. So, but so that's right now is a good time to expose them to other possibilities, okay, to new concepts. Once you get there, it's very hard to introduce them to, uh, to uh, these, uh, these uh, various aspects, okay? That's my excuse, okay? Uh, but, mm. but when you speak Dharma, it's very important to make sure that you cannot, you cannot make blanket statements like that. Uh, because you're not the authority. You see? And my, my first reaction uh, was that, who is he? Who are you quoting? Uh, who are these monks and nuns? But if I said that immediately, I would be reacting, I would come across as a negative reaction. There's no need for that even. Okay? Whatever, whoever says it, doesn't matter. I'm only teaching you, my followers, about what not to do. We learn from these people so that we don't make the same mistakes. I have the luxury of coming way at the end of Master Shenhua's teaching so that I can observe what he produced. And then I was able to observe for four years what his disciples behave, how they behave, what they could understand. So that the experience taught me so much uh, so many things that I'm teaching you now is the exactly uh, what I observed from my four and a half years there. What not to do. 90% is what not to do. That's what I learned. Okay? It's not what I would do. Okay? It's the same thing here. And these people talk about um, bad mouth others and so forth. Okay? My first reaction is, who are they? Who, is this? Who are these people? Are they qualified teachers or not? 
Okay? If they're not qualified teachers, there's no need to say anything, no need to react at all. Well, it's like if uh, ignorant people uh, talk about, talk their ignor ignorance, they express their ignorance. So what's a big deal? They're free to express themselves. Okay? It's not a big deal. Uh, they sh we should encourage them to talk because it helps them uh, release the pressure. <laughs> I have no problem with them saying uh, silly things. It's, it's perfectly okay. Uh, people are not that stupid. People can decide for themselves. So we don't need, we don't need to be overly uh, uh, protective of people. People, I believe, are very smart, are very, very savvy. They, they listen enough, they will read enough, they will uh, watch enough uh, videos, uh, YouTube and so forth, and they will decide for themselves. We don't need to worry about, okay? We just do our things. Uh, so there's no need to criticize others, okay? But for, for, for a monk to make a blanket statement like there's no peer land down my door, uh, that uh, it better be based on their personal experience. Did they verify that there is absolutely no pure land at all? Okay? If it's not verified, they sound like a fool. Okay? If they can't verify it, then you should, they should, you should be careful and say, who said there is pure land? I cannot verify it's pure land myself personally, but I believe this pure land, okay, because my teacher, who is a high level Mahasattva, Mahasattva has low level and high level. He's very high level Mahasattva. He says there's pure land. So I believe him. And that's good enough for me. I don't know about the existence of pure land, I don't know about Amitabha Buddha. What I know is that of a great monk called Master Shen Huang, which I, whom I believe wholeheartedly. Uh, okay? And if he says it's pure land, I believe it's pure land. Okay? Mm. And he taught us about the pure land Dhamma door. We practiced it, and for, for, by a stroke of luck, I was able to verify these people actually made it to the pure land. So, in my mind, personally, there's no doubt at all there's pure land, okay? And uh, among our uh, students, uh, there's one today here present who keeps on seeing one Yin Bodhisattva flying at uh, Lu Mountain Temple, at Wei Mountain Temple. Another disciple of mine keeps on saying that Wan Yin talks to her constantly. I say, oh, please, Wan Yin, don't go to her. Go to me directly. I don't want to, I don't want uh, third parties, you want to talk to me, call me. Okay, please. <laughs> I'm very reasonable. Okay, uh, I don't feel threatened at all. Uh, uh, but, um, so, it's best when you, you speak Dharma, and that it should, should be based on your own experience, not just from reading a book. Uh, so, uh, and, uh, and furthermore, when you speak Dharma, it has to, to be, uh, uh, what, uh, yeah, when you listen to Dharma, you have to, to, to verify that this person is an authority on the topic, otherwise you're wasting time. Okay? Uh, I don't think... Uh, Real uh, uh, monks and nuns who have real wisdom would ever deny there's such a thing, the, the, uh, deny the existence of the pure land at all, okay? Uh, or deny the existence of one yin bodhisattva at all. And that's uh, uh, lunacy, that's uh, stupidity, in my humble opinion. It's just my opinion, okay? So it's okay. Whatever they want to say is uh, their prerogative. We're not worried about that, okay? Uh, and don't worry about how it will affect others. It's none of our business, okay? 
There's plenty of garbage out there on the, on the internet, on books that they come and dump at our Buddha hall. And there's a rule of thumb, by the way, any books that's there that's not approved, dump it. Okay, we don't need to, to accept trash. I don't care. Okay, whether it says uh, sutra this, sutra that, one yin this, one yin that, I don't care. Okay, yeah. If you cannot come to our temple and dump your books without permission, okay, uh, to me it's garbage. If, uh, if you don't have permission, you, th you, you, you put in garbage in our temple. Okay, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, orderly here. Uh, doesn't look it, but uh, we have procedures. Uh, all right. Uh, I hope it helps. Uh, don't stop. Stop uh, worrying about others. Uh, stop. Uh, uh, if whatever they want to say, it's none of our business. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, doesn't matter. I assure you, Wan Yin is not bothered at all when she hears that. Uh, uh, this particular, these monks and nuns don't believe in, in one yin at all. Uh, I don't think they can hurt one yin's feelings at all. Uh, or call one yin as a, a bad woman. Uh, it wouldn't bother her, I, uh, I assure you. Okay. Uh, it's just like a, a child. He's going to do whatever he wants to do. Let him be. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, that's what life is about. You let, you, you let them be themselves, okay? And embrace them, okay? Uh, one day, these monks and nuns will wake up, and, and, uh, and then one year will be there to welcome them with open arms and say, I've been waiting for a long time for you to uh, turn from small to big, from Hinayana to Mahayana. What took you so long? Hmm? Hmm? Have you been suffering a lot? Hmm? Hmm? Would you like to cry on my shoulders? Is that why you've been saying all these naughty things about me? You know? All right. Anyone else? Yes, number one. Thank you, Master. Uh, so I feel my face... My belief in Pure Land is very superficial. Um, deep down, I feel I don't believe it that much. Um, can you teach me how to cultivate a deeper faith in the Pure Land? You don't have faith in the Pure Land because you're in your background, you want, uh, you, you, you are, uh, uh, you, you, you demand facts. You demand cert a verification before you commit to it. That's a normal thing to do. That's a smart thing to do. That's what smart people should do, uh, including us. When we listen to someone who says, there's no Pure Dharma, there's no Wan Yin. When, when millions of people, billions of people believe in Wan Yin, believe in Pure Land Dharma door, and when this, this person who says, there's no such a thing, who's going to believe? One guy or a million people? So anyway, uh, so yes, uh, it's, it's a perfectly reasonable to uh, uh, have uh, uh, what we call shallow faith. Shallow people, what can we do? Okay, it's true. It's called shallow faith. The faith there, but it's still shallow. It's like the roots of the grass. It's very shallow. It's not deep at all. Okay, because it's the nature of grass. Grass, roots, the roots of the grass is very shallow. That's all. It's perfectly okay. Okay? And, and so uh, the reason that you are still struggling with that faith is because you are, don't have enough uh, facts to help reassure yourself this is the good path, this is the right path. Like most Hinayana people, they said, uh, in Hinayana environment, that's just maybe like that monk, uh, he says, I don't see the pure land. How could that be a pure land? 
The Buddha is no, in, nothing in my suttas. It says it's a pure land, therefore it cannot be a pure land. It's reasonable, okay? Hmm. But, hmm. so in your case, it's very simple. It's a matter of, uh, uh, of time. You need more time to uh, let the seeds you've been planting the last uh, uh, several months. Uh, give them a chance to uh, mature, okay? The seeds have been planted already, okay? So it's a matter of time, okay? Uh, and uh, I will tell you this. Uh, uh, you will, if you stick around long enough, you talk to these people here who've been with us for a long time, okay? Uh, a long, long time, years, several years, 10 years plus, okay? And some of them came here before I even, I even bothered to explain a lot about the Pure Land. They believe immediately. Uh, as soon as I said, you need to take care of your parents because uh, uh, people uh, of the world don't know enough about death. Okay? And it's a big mystery to them. And therefore, they're ill-prepared for death. Okay? So th to the point where they listen to uh, whatever they read, whatever, listen to whoever talks about it. So the Tibetans talk about death. They talk about consciousness and so forth. And it's only a small picture of death. That, that big thing, a huge thing called death. Okay? Chan school, we talk about death indirectly. It says, you can rise above death by becoming enlightened, okay? And either four stage out or higher. That's how you combat death, okay? And once you get to those levels, we teach you more, okay? But for how about your parents who may be very successful in the world, but all these successful people invariably uh, have a bad ending, which in the Asian culture is what you try to avoid to do, okay? You want to have a good life is the one that has a good ending. A good death, a good, good things that happen after you die. Because in Buddhism, Death is not the end. Death is the beginning of something, something else. So you better prepare for that, okay? And only in Mahayana do we have enough information for you to help you cope with that, okay? So you have two choices. You can choose to ignore it, like worldly people, and say, I don't believe this crap. There's no proof, there's no facts. So be it, okay? Uh, then. Be just like the rest of them. Uh, they, they die. Uh, uh, many successful people, rich people, powerful people, they have a m miserable ending. So much suffering. Okay? Uh, and, or you can say, maybe, I'm not sure entirely, but the nature of Pure Land Amador is that uh, for those of us who believe in it, we believe it's like one advantage of the Pure Land Dharma door is a form of insurance policy. You have health insurance, don't you? And uh, you're not driving, so you don't have car insurance. Okay? Uh, trust me, uh, the guy right behind you has car insurance, and he's so glad because otherwise he'll be indebted up to his neck. Huh? Okay. Insurance is critical because you never know. Okay. Uh, the, the downside is so huge and the probability is very small. Okay. That's why we need insurance. Okay. To avoid calamities, to deal with calamities. And let me tell you, uh, similarly, if you're not, you're ill prepared for death, and after death, some calamity should occur. What are you going to do? And the Pure Land Dharma for us is an insurance policy 
for those calamities that's going to befall upon the majority of us based on our Buddhist teachings. If you think uh, you want to have a glimpse of what's going to happen to you, okay, uh, uh, just look at yourself right now. Uh, this gentleman who, who sent us a question from uh, the white gentleman who sent us a question, okay, he's angry. Uh, if you keep on nurturing that anger inside of you, uh, that disapproval of others inside of you, when you die, you're going to fall. Okay? Uh, you're going to fall for sure because you're so miserable already. Okay? Uh, and the anger is poisoning you, is destroying your body. Okay? It's, uh, it's uh, harming your heart. It's a it's, uh, it's uh, destructive to, to your liver. You don't even know. You're not even aware of it. That's how, how little awareness people are, have about their own body, their own health. Okay? So in general, I, don't wanna, I wanna spare you with the details, the gory details about what happens to you when you're angry constantly. Okay? Uh, you wanna see, look at uh, the old monk at uh, Gold Forest. He has a heart issue, huge, huge anger issues his entire life. Now he has severe heart problems, triple bypass three times already. Okay? Uh, so uh, you're hurting yourself. But anyway, the concept of Vipila and Damador is that just in case that, that we may be right, there may be a one yin, maybe a pure land dharma, okay, uh, from the people, uh, because uh, people of great wisdom say so, contrary to these small people, these babies who claim there's no pure land, no one yin, the big, the big people, the, the people knowledgeable, the knowledgeable people say there is. Just in case those people are right, okay, that's by some insurance. And so the pillar and Damador is that insurance policy, if you will. Okay? Uh, so uh, that's what the pure land uh, Buddhists believe. Uh, they don't quite, are not quite able to formulate it that way, but that's what the rationale behind it for, for, for those people. So you get the insurance first, okay? Just in case. And eventually, as when you get the insurance, you actually plant the seeds for you to be able to benefit from that, from that Dharma door, and eventually the faith will take root naturally. So, in short, the reason the faith is shallow is because not enough blessings yet. Okay? All right, time is up. Let me uh, make the point very quickly. Okay. Um, I want you, who those of you who went to that uh, Getty Villa, to uh, remember this. Okay, uh, that is what we what we uh, what we uh, enjoyed was the generosity from a ex oil man. Oil man. He was he was uh, J. Paul Getty was one of the earliest billionaires in the history of in this country. You know, he was a billionaire in the 1950s already, okay? And he was one of the first billionaires in the country. Uh, and, um, and, and so, and, uh, so we, uh, when he died, he left uh, a fortune of $65 million to that museum, the uh, Getty Museum. So that's why it's free, provided free to us, okay? At the American uh, generosity that we were the recipients of. And we should be grateful for that. You see how beautiful the mind can be, okay? The mind that my man said, mind is dark. When he made his money, he did a lot of bad things, created a lot of bad karmas. And later on, his family, his future generation had a lot of problems, kidnapping, disease, uh, uh, accidental death, and so forth, okay? Uh, so that's what happens uh, when you when you have when you generate uh, fortune, you make money with illicit means. Your offsprings will not get to enjoy it. 
they, uh, they come with a lot of gar uh, baggage that they, they can, don't get to enjoy the money. Okay, uh, so be careful about that. But regardless, we are, you know, this, uh, that's the, uh, the uh, I, I want you to remember the, the kindness and generosity from, from this man, Paul Getty. And if he has no wisdom, if, and he created that many karmas, and yet he's able to do something that benefits so many people, can you imagine that you spend millions of dollars to give it away for people to come and enjoy the villa, enjoy the time with their families, their friends, and learn about art, and eat some uh, Vietnamese sandwiches and so forth? You know, that when, when you are able to give without expecting anything in return, that's a kind of Mahayana spirit that we, have, we should have as well, okay? And if this lay person who is this misguided person uh, uh, is able to do that, then we should remember that and be grateful for that, and we should try to even do even better ourselves, yes? Hmm? And that's what, what we are about. It's not about us at all. It's about trying to improve ourselves. I give you the culture. I give you the exposure in order for you to uh, get some relief, get some, get a break from a, from a tough cultivation schedule we have here. Uh, uh, and you imagine last night, I mean Friday night, Friday lunch. I said, you know, I don't know about you, but uh, my my weekend begins at five today. I have a class. Uh, for Asia at five o'clock here, our time, California time. And you know what the answer was from my, my, my disciple? They all said, oh no. Our, if your weekend begins at five, ours begin at 2.30. We need to get ready for you. <laughs> Speaking of ingratitude, I just took them to, to get a villa, and I said, but, but that's not enough. <laughs> no. The point here is that, is that you know, uh, I want you, I want all of you to remember that Mahayana spirit, this guy, this man here loved art, he loves and, antiques, and he shared it with us, okay, as sharing his joy with us. Okay. You can do the same thing too, especially you Koreans. Okay. We Americans, we have it already. Okay. But you Koreans, you should build your samadhi power. And when you have the more samadhi you have, when you become enlightened, that's when you can experience this real joy in your heart, which is far greater than Mr. Getty can experience when he looked at his art, when he looked at his antiques. It's not the same joy as ours. And when you can experience that joy in your heart, when you become enlightened, you, yellow people, and white people, and colored people, and men, and women, just in case, to cover all the bases. <laughs> okay. When you are able to experience that joy, okay, which I assure you will be far greater than Mr. Getty's joy when he looked at his arts, his art collection. It gave him immense joy. And I assure you, your joy will be far greater. When you get to that point, okay, or when you get to the Pure Land, those of you, who believe in the pure land, unlike uh, Ray there, okay? Who believe in the pure land, and when you get to the pure land yourself, and I saw it, all the people, for most of the people, okay? Uh, uh, almost all the people who went there, uh, they, the joy they experience is way beyond any joy they experience here in a Sahara world. Believe it or not, 
they're so overjoyed. They say, wow, this is so cool. What took me, what took me so long to get here? Okay? And you know, and they said, I'm never coming back to the Sahara world. I don't care what Master Yung Hua says. <laughs> okay? I'm never going back. Okay? But they, there is this joy that I'm telling you that, what, that will make all the hard, hardship or the hard work you put in to get there, to, to, get, to get to those points. Uh, okay? And... And that's why the Buddha is doing this. This is why we're doing this, to help you experience that joy, so that a way of sharing the joy with you. And when you experience that, okay, wherever you go, okay, you're sharing it already. You don't need to spend a lot of money like Mr. Getty, okay, to give people joy, sensual joy, but give the joy that comes from your Buddha nature, okay? that is so powerful, that is so uplifting, that gives people hope, that gives people comfort, okay? That relief, give you some relief of stress without doing anything, just being yourself. You like it, Sang Wook? Sang Wook loves it. He says, I'm glad I'm here. I'm not never going back to Korea. Selfish Hinayana person. Okay? I assure you the joy that you will experience, that we're leading you in the path to, will far exceed the joy of shikshak food. So far, so good? So we cover all bases. Okay? And let me tell you, when you get there, when you get there, you naturally give it without being asked. Just be yourself. All right? Yes, number five, last question. Heidi is asking, when I drive, should I recite Yao Shu Ru Lai or Benison Master Mantra? Uh, Yao Shu Ru Lai. I don't want her to enter samadhi and then uh, plow into someone. Namo bhoche fadi bishasha. Bang! And she goes to the pew land. The rest of us suffers, continue to suffer. That's not fair. <laughs> okay, thank you, everyone. That's what I wanted to tell you, okay, about this, uh, this cultural day, okay? You, you have joy, we had fun. Uh, we had joy, we had fun. We have some in the sun. <laughs> okay? Uh, when you have fun, that's when you can be generous like Mr. Getty. You know that? He's generous because he has his joy that he experienced. And he says, this is worth it. I want to share it with, with, with others. I give this to others. That's natural. Okay? That's the same thing. When you have the experience that true joy I'm talking about, that bliss I'm talking about, you naturally give it away. Naturally. Okay? So, all you who didn't go, you approved that I took my disciples to go and goof off? Don't judge us, okay? We are serious cultivators. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.